you will never become rich or wealthier by saving your money in bank account you can only become rich by making your money to grow more than the inflation rate if you keep all your savings in a bank account then one day thanks to the inflation your money will become 90% or 95% low it is a reality that you need to accept even if you are earning lakhs and crores of money if you don't know how to grow that money how to make that money work for you then ultimately you will never become wealthier so if you are a beginner if you are a student or if you are someone who has started your career or if you are someone who is earning decent income but still don't know how to make your money grow this video is something that you should definitely watch in this video i will share complete a to z investing roadmap for beginners before jumping on to the video make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you will not miss any of my videos in the coming days many of the wealthy investors out there or many of the rich people out there what they do to make their money grow is they invest their money in different classes different assets so that is very essential and that is something which is a successful formula as well there is a reason for it because inflation rate is currently at 7% per year which means your the value of your money is decreasing 7% every year if you are just putting your money in bank then how can your money grow no right so you don't you need to make sure that your money will grow more than the inflation rate 8% or 10% or more than that how to do that so can you invest all your money in the stock market no that won't work because you cannot do that you cannot keep all your money into single asset that is also a bad thing you need to create a portfolio you need to create an investment portfolio and in this i am here to help you on that in this video make sure so whatever the salary it might be make sure you invest at least 40% of your income 40% this is true this is something that you need to practice even though you feel like you're failing to do so make sure you find ways make sure you find ways to cut down your expenses and invest at least 40% because this is essential and it's not like in like you don't need to invest 40% in stock market i will simplify in this video that how you should plan your portfolio the first thing as i said 40% of your income should go to investing and there were many types as well that 40% i will divide that 40% into four different classes again now we will talk about the first 10% you should invest your first 10% into three different things emergency fund health insurance and term insurance i will talk one by one why you need emergency fund if you are working if you are earning 50000 per month as we spoke earlier suddenly because of layoffs or because of the recession like your fight so what can you do now because your family is dependent on you or you have your own expenses every month like you are paying emis and your many expenses to cover but if you are not earning all of a sudden who will pay all those emis and bills so that is the reason why you should have an emergency fund mainly because in these situations like currently we are witnessing mass layoffs and recession so we need to maintain an emergency fund and that is very very important and that is the first step that you should do it will also come under investment again and the, uh, you can ask me like where should we put our emergency fund general 6 months of emergency fund is required for any individual out there how can you calculate that like list down all your expenses and see like what are the essentials you are paying every month let's suppose you have bills to pay uh, up to 20 20000 or something then ultimately that 20000 is your essential so you need to make sure you have at least 6 months of emergency fund and you should put that in your bank account that will be fine because emergency fund is required uh, in emergency cases you need that immediately so that is the reason why it's okay to have that in your bank account because you are not planning to uh, see that for long term purposes you are you need emergency fund just because in case you are fired in case you don't have a job in case you have a family to feed then in those cases you need an emergency fund it's good to have savings of at least 6 months of your uh, monthly income that is very essential and second thing term insurance uh, if you can ask me why term insurance is important for an young individual i can say it is mainly important for young individuals because if you opt for term insurance uh, the premiums would be low especially if you are young i mean there are many advantages out there and don't link term insurance with savings or investment this investment is purely for your dependents that's it like suddenly if any unfortunate situation happens and you are no more then ultimately in those difficult situations how can your family will survive in those cases term insurance will play an important role you can literally get one crore term insurance at 600 or 700 rupees premiums per month every month dedicate that 600 or 700 
for your uh, monthly premiums because like when you're no more your family will get that one crore and they and that amount will be helpful for them so it's for your dependent that is a first step of taking any responsibility you can say so that is important and number three health insurance uh, in especially uh, we have witnessed covid uh, in the recent times and we have seen like how it impacted many of our closed ones or many of our friends like we have witnessed many uh, such cases right so all of a sudden like for family members are in medical emergency then in those cases like if you don't have a health insurance like you need to spend all your savings sometimes you might be out of your savings as well so having a health insurance would be always ideal because it covers all the medical expenses health insurance is something that you also need to be aware of so you need to divide your first 10% of your investing amount for emergency fund term insurance and health insurance so this is a first 10% that you need to put on 10% of your salary make sure you split into uh, these three things let's suppose you are earning 50000 per month percent of it is 5000 right your term insurance will cost around 600 to 700 and your medical insurance if you are opted for your parents like it costs uh, of course it costs a little bit more uh, it costs around 1000 to 1500 so 2000 will be for them and rest 3000 is for emergency funds so, 1000 of your salary or 10% of your salary went to emergency fund term insurance and health insurance let's come to second 10% where to invest your second 10% this 10% you should invest in safe assets safe assets are in the land like these assets sometimes will uh, will give you more than inflation returns sometimes will give you near to inflation returns but these will not go down uh, drastically so the first way is to invest in fixed deposits of course fixed deposits will not give you uh, handsome returns it will give you most of the banks will give you around six percent and some banks will give you around seven percent uh, it's near to inflation returns i can say but the thing is like your money is not going down here it is matching with the inflation which means your money is not growing and not falling as well money is growing at an inflation rate that's a secure thing you can also invest on mutual funds Mutual funds in general promise uh, most of the mutual funds will give you around 10% average returns. So uh, the advantage of mutual funds is like you don't need to take the risk of choosing uh, which stocks to invest or which companies to invest. There will be a mutual fund manager. They will take care of that part and they will charge some fees for that. An average, uh, if you can consider the last 10 years mutual funds data, the average returns is around 10%. It is more than inflation and more than fixed deposit. And other thing is index funds. Index funds are like you're investing in India stock market. If your country is growing, your index funds will also grow. These are somewhat safer because index funds are based on index. Uh, let's suppose you have invested in Nifty 50 index. The top 50 companies in India belong to Nifty 50. If India is growing, these 50 companies will grow and the and vice versa. So your index funds are relatively safe when compared to individual stock. So index funds is also a good option. Second 10% should go to fixed deposits, mutual funds and index funds. So you have invested 20% already. Now let's come to the other 10%. You should invest these in somewhat risky assets like stock market and bonds stock market like you believe let's suppose you are, you believe in an individual company suppose you are working in tcs and you believe that tcs will grow eventually then you can directly invest some of your money on that tcs stock if you believe that reliance will grow in the future you can invest that on that stock but you need to make sure you do enough research just don't blindly follow stock recommendations in youtube or instagram because that will never work something which is beneficial for others might be uh, not beneficial for you so make sure you do enough research if you are using some products of ITC your Hindustan Unilever uh, your, your might, might, might be uh, groceries in your kitchen the food that you eat it might be shampoo so whatever it might be if you feel like you can't live without them then to make, which means that they are good so invest on stocks which you believe that they will grow and invest in stocks on various different stock broker apps like upstocks jeroda etc you can find some of those links to open accounts it might be mutual funds or index funds or it might be stocks you will find them in the description the other thing that you can invest is on bonds in general like some companies will issue bonds which means like you need to invest some money on them and they will use that money for their business purposes and the, according to that bond they will pay you some fixed proportion each year you are investing in a bond of a company called ABC. According to the bond agreement, they said like if you invest some money here, 
we will pay you we will pay you money after one year with 10% extra so this is how bonds work bonds are fixed which means like whatever the interest that they will mention they will pay you they will not pay less or more than that so that is the meaning of bond but these are somewhat riskier but still they will pay you good returns in stock market in average you will get around 15 percent returns when we compare the last 10 to 20 years ago. but still some years you, your money will not grow and some years your money will grow uh, drastically so you will never know that but these are riskier investments and in the long term you will get money but you need to make sure you invest only on things that you are aware of so your thought 10 percent is also done then what about other uh, last 10 percent of your investment portfolio gold and real estate of course gold is something that you might already witness in your home so it's good to invest on gold as well because in various situations in a warlike situations if stock market is down if mutual funds are not performing if banks are not performing everything is going down then ultimately the world will depend on gold so gold will eventually go high so like gold is also a safer investment option if you can see like there is no if you can compare the gold prices every two to three years like you'll only see an upward trajectory not the other way so gold is also a good investment option you can allocate something you can uh, you can allocate some money for gold you can purchase it or you can buy digital gold as well you will find digital gold options in pomp and other options as well if gold price is going your money will also grow or you can buy physical gold that's that uh, even that's fine Another thing is real estate. Of course, real estate is not an easy option for every individual, I can say. But still, if you can save some money for real estate purpose, like that, will, that is also a good option. Even it might be a plot, even it might be a single piece of land, whatever it might be. But yeah, having it, having some of your investments on real estate is also a good, a good way. So make sure you always invest the other or last 10% into gold and real estate. These are the things which will give you which will compound at a very fast pace so these are all the investments that your investment portfolio should have if you feel that one thing is not possible adjust that accordingly like uh, let's suppose in the last 10 percent if you feel like you don't need the real estate because you're already living in a home and you don't need any other lands or you feel like your salary is very low you cannot invest that low portion on real estate you can adjust that to gold you can invest that portion to gold as well it is how you should structure your portfolio make sure 40 percent of your income will go to investments and this is how you should structure your portfolio i hope this video will be helpful for you if you're a new visitor to my channel please subscribe to my channel feel like this video would add some value to any of your friends or families please share this video in your network thank you for watching